on, big brother. I've met babies before. I expect meeting this one won't be any different. <gasps> Damn, that's an ugly baby. Damn, that's an ugly ass baby. I'm feeling quite concerned. My semen must have turned. Cause damn, that's an ugly baby. As the episode begins, we see that Starlight is indeed living in Ponyville now. There was some debate about that at the end of Season 5, and she's staying in Twilight's castle no less. Hey, she's even been added to the opening title sequence, along with the Crusader's cutie marks. I'm not too crazy about her new hairstyle, though. It looks like she has a comb over. Anyway, there are two stories going on here. Starlight's first friendship lesson, which will reunite her with her childhood friend Sunburst, and the birth of Cadence and Shining Armor's baby, Flurryheart, who's been the worst-kept secret on the internet since Twilight becoming an alicorn. Well, well, since the episode opened up with Starlight, that's where all begin. It's an awkward reunion, mostly because of Starlight and Sunburst jumping to conclusions about how each other's lives turned out. Starlight assumes that Sunburst became an important wizard, though it's immediately apparent that he didn't, and he's pretty ashamed of that. While Sunburst assumes that Starlight being Twilight's student must mean something really good, as opposed to becoming one of Twilight's most dangerous enemies and almost destroying Equestria without even meaning to. What's interesting about Starlight's dilemma is that she practically has a clean slate at this point. The main six have forgiven her, and almost no one else even knows what she did. But considering she spent most of her life isolating herself from everyone, what else is there to talk about? All the most interesting stuff she's done is connected with something horrible. And since she's vowed not to be a lying asshole anymore, I think, how do you move forward from that and get anyone to accept you? Hmm, I wonder if she might write to Sunset Shimmer for advice at some point. I mean, socially speaking, she actually had to bounce back from worse. Meanwhile, we get another cutie mark crisis with Sunburst. While he was always assumed to be magically gifted, it turns out his real talent is in studying magic, accumulating an encyclopedic knowledge that even rivals Twilight. The only problem is he can't actually cast any of the spells he knows. In fact, during a flashback, we see that all he ever used was a variation on the basic levitation spell that every unicorn has. But even when they were kids, Starlight still had more raw ability. Though from her point of view, it looked like Sunburst was more advanced because of how smart he was. Now look, as soon as all this was revealed, I just knew his knowledge would prove to be important by the end of the episode, and the different types of ponies are integrated enough that you would think one unicorn who can't use magic wouldn't be that big of a deal. But still, when you are that unicorn, and you spend most of your life in unicorn school dedicating yourself to learning something you can't actually do, yeah, it makes a lot more sense why he's so quiet when we first meet him. I also like how Spike is once again the sensible one during these scenes, encouraging Starlight to speak up when it's appropriate. It's not hard to understand. Most things in the Crystal Empire aren't. Like how I'm a big hero there, for example. Hey, wait a minute, wasn't there an entire episode teaching Spike that it was okay to be proud of that? For that matter, wasn't there a year-long story arc leading up to that episode? I mean, yeah, their reactions are pretty funny, but come on, guys, what the hell? Admittedly, him telling Starlight to share something embarrassing, as instructed by Twilight, is a bit too on the nose, but that is ultimately how she reconnects with Sunburst. They're both so ashamed of themselves that it actually helps for each of them to find out that the other went through some seriously bad shit after the last time they saw each other. And so, Starlight's first friendship lesson is a success, but I'll talk more about that a bit later. For now, let's check in on the baby. When I initially saw Flurryheart, I immediately thought about Pumpkin and Poundcake, who are really the only other baby characters that the show is focused on. Back in the episode Baby Cakes, I was impressed at how uniquely intelligent the twins were and that they were actually reacting to things happening around them. By comparison, Flurryheart is the complete opposite. She's just a derpy-ass baby who's completely oblivious to everything. And on top of that, she exists for the sole purpose of causing trouble for the other characters. Though, at least there's only one crying scene, plus most of the annoying stuff is thankfully minimized by focusing on the grown-up characters. And her horn is like a miniature death ray. What I really like about these segments is that we also get a lot of new information about the show's universe, which, let's face it, the fact that they can still do that now in Season 6 is pretty awesome. It turns out that all new babies born in the Crystal Empire go through a ritual called the Crystalling, which helps strengthen the Crystal Heart. Another way I I personally interpret it is that it bonds the baby to the crystal heart, which might also explain why the crystal ponies are able to reinforce the heart's power by feeling good. We also learn that while the good mojo magic repels evil forces, the crystal heart by itself is powerful enough to keep out the harsh weather, which is how they were able to survive during King Sombra's rule. But perhaps the big
biggest surprise is that Flurry Heart is actually the first natural-born alicorn in the history of Equestria. This has caused a bit of debate as to what it could mean for Celestia and Luna. Did they become alicorns later in life, or is it more of a technicality since they were born before Equestria was founded? All I know is that every time I learn more about these two, it makes me want to see a Celestia and Luna spin-off show more than ever. But getting back to Flurry Heart, is there anything that I genuinely like about the character? Well, yes. In this moment here, seeing how much she just wants Pinkie Pie, that had all of the daw. Too bad that after that, she breaks the crystal heart and immediately forgets about it. God, babies suck. But of course, then Sunburst saves the day and we finally get to hear Twilight's parents, who were played by Tara Strong and Andrew Francis. Caden Starling, aren't we gonna name the poor little dear? Or are we gonna spend the entire visit just calling her the baby? Yeah, you're one to talk, Mrs. Sparkle. Also, shouldn't they have picked a name when the baby was born? I mean, it's what they put on the birth certificate. You don't just get to go home without naming your kid. Unless... Maybe that's why everyone's name seems oddly personalized. The ponies actually get a grace period to figure out the kids' personalities before naming them. But moving on, the episode ends with Twilight reflecting on Starlight's lesson. And I really like this, even though Spike points out that everything worked out and that even Celestia taught Twilight by keeping her distance, Twilight still cares about giving Starlight personal attention. Yeah, keeping your distance can work sometimes, you just shouldn't rely on it all the time, particularly if your student has a bit of an anti social streak. Though, let's be honest, Twilight has a habit of micromanaging everything to an unhealthy degree, and that also needs to be kept in check. In the end, this was a very solid opening to Season 6. Aside from a few annoyances, this actually feels like it's just an extension of Season 5, and frankly, that's not a bad thing. Season 5 is my favorite season of the show so far. Will future episodes continue that trend? We'll find out. The Crystalline gets an 8 out of 10. I always wanted kids Is it wrong to hope for SIDS? Fuck you, it's my fucking baby! Damn, that's an ugly baby Come on everybody, sing it all! Damn, that's an ugly baby Sing fuckers, come on! Damn, that's an ugly baby Wait! What? Knocking on the door isn't the next thing on the list. Seriously? 